Hello and welcome to the official Cutting Edge podcast. I'm Gavin Salkeld, the writer, director and creator of the YouTube series Cutting Edge. And this is the second episode of our podcast, which has been a long time coming. And for that, I apologize. There are numerous reasons that it has taken over two years for this episode of the show to be released. But nevertheless, we hope you enjoy listening to it. Now, this episode covers the issue of BBFC advice and distributor pre-cuts and where the so-called blame lies when a film is cut based on BBFC advice. Is the BBFC to blame for filmmakers cutting their films, or is it the distributors who want to have a wider reaching audience by cutting their films for a lower rating? It's a bit of a murky area, but I want to explore both sides of the argument. Now, distributors in the UK have two options available to them when it comes to having their film rated by the BBFC. They can submit a film to the BBFC for so-called informal advice on what rating a film is likely to achieve, be it a U, PG, 12, 12A, 15 or 18, or they can submit a final cut of a film for a formal classification. The distributors have the option of indicating a preferred rating at either stage, although given the nature of the advice process, this option is perhaps more commonly exercised at that stage. The BBFC has always offered informal advice right through from the script stage to the rough cut version of a film. In fact, the FAQ on the BBFC website states, The BBFC has been providing age rating advice to filmmakers and film distributors on how to achieve their preferred category for almost 100 years. Advice viewings and script readings have always been common. What has changed is that today we are more open about which films were advised on and what changes were advised. Film classification bodies in other countries offer the same services to varying degrees, although not all of them provide this information to the public. I should just state that that is very commendable behaviour on behalf of the BBFC. If you compare them to the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, in the United States, uh, the MPAA are highly secretive and nowhere near as open or transparent as the BBFC. So, kudos to the BBFC for that. The discussion of the pros and cons of the BBFC advice process has cropped up online in some instances. Uh, for example, the Blu-ray.com forum had a rather heated discussion about who was responsible for the cuts made to the Equalizer, Antoine Fuqua's film, which we've covered in the YouTube series. It was originally seen by the BBFC for advice by the distributors for feedback on how to achieve a 15 rating for the Equalizer's UK cinema release. The BBFC indicated during the advice process that cuts were necessary for a 15 rating, and various members of the Blu-ray forum argued on one side that it was purely the distributor's fault that the film was cut, and other users were arguing that the BBFC were the ones to blame. Now, this was a multi-page discussion, and there are far too many quotes to mention here, but I have selected some key posts from both sides of the argument that I think sum up the situation of blame very well. So some posts that blame the distributors include Everyone in the thread is blaming the cuts on the BBFC for having its standards set too harshly. Personally, I don't think that argument holds water. Another one read I thought it was established that opting for the lower certificate and cutting the film was the distributor's decision though. The BBFC only advise, surely we should level our frustration at the distributor. Another comment said, It's not the BBFC hacking away at it. The cuts were made in post-production by the distributor. And one final post, It isn't very difficult to understand. The BBFC didn't cut it, the distributor did. It was 100% the decision of the distributor. So some compelling arguments there. But on the flip side of that argument, there were some posts that blamed the BBFC for the cuts to the Equalizer. One of them said, The distributors may have chosen BBFC advice, but the fact is the BBFC advised the cuts, 
they are the ones who would have passed it on cut at 15. So it is the BBFC that are telling you what you can cope with seeing. Another comment, it baffles me how so many miss the point and champion the works of our nanny BBFC. The distributor put forward a complete, finished, ready to run and sell version they were happy with and wanted a 15 rating to make more money. It was the BBFC who decided what content is or isn't allowed for this rating and the distributor had to make these cuts for the 15. The point that many refuse to see is that this movie is a violent action movie. It still includes graphic scenes of death and killing, which the BBFC are fine for a 15 year old to watch. So why allow all of the graphic scenes bar two? Only the BBFC has said Brits under 18 can't handle that. Now, a few years before this, there were similar arguments made about blaming the BBFC for the cuts made to The Hunger Games in 2012 for a 12 A rating. And these comments surfaced on a blog post by the film critic Dr. Mark Commode, of which we're big fans of Cutting Edge. And one particular user comment stood out, and that was, This recent trend of demanding cuts is a slippery slope to a censorship disaster. As far as I'm concerned, when someone outside the UK, e.g. an American, asks me if I've seen The Hunger Games, I have to reply, no, despite having supposedly seen something like The Hunger Games in the cinema. Film is a subtle art. Even the smallest cut can have the greatest impact on the whole piece. Ask any editor. So, as Brits have not seen the same movie. And you can't blame the studios for this. If the BBFC effectively state, cut this, this and this, or you won't be making as much money in this territory, of course they're going to comply. It's on the BBFC's head, and they should really reconsider their ways. So having heard arguments from both sides, who is responsible for the cutting of a film if those cuts are based on BBFC advice? Well, yes, film distributors are requesting a specific rating, but they are not just randomly cutting footage in order to achieve that rating. The classification of a film and any cuts made to it are based on the BBFC's rules of what they deem is permitted at a particular rating. So let's break down the BBFC advice process for people who may not be familiar with it. In terms of the BBFC looking at a rough cut of a work in progress film, the advice viewing or advice screening is an informal part of the BBFC classification process. It's not the same as them awarding a formal certificate. A film company can submit a rough cut of the film to the BBFC in the UK for advice on how to achieve a particular rating or they can get an idea of what rating the film would achieve when it was submitted later for a formal classification. Now, if the BBFC indicates that cuts are needed to attain a certain rating, such cuts are dictated to the filmmakers by phone or by email. A formal cuts list is not listed. It's purely done by phone or email. Now, an example of a film that was seen for advice is Casino Royale from 2006. Again, this is a film we covered in the series on YouTube. The film was submitted to the BBFC during the post-production stage, so the final construction of what would be a theatrical cut was still being undertaken. Casino Royale was seen for advice by the BBFC on how the filmmakers could achieve a 12A rating, and the board cited specific sections in the torture scene that fell foul of their 12A guidelines. These instances are listed on the BBFC website. So, the film was submitted in a rough cut form. The board said, if you need a 12A, these scenes need to be addressed. And as a result, the studio edited the offending footage, um, which resulted in about 13 seconds of footage being removed, I think. And Casino Royale was resubmitted for a formal classification after which it was past 12A. With advice viewings, the BBFC do not list the amount of footage that was removed following such an advice screening. So on the BBFC website, Casino Royale is listed now as being passed uncut, which is technically untrue. Now, let's assume that the BBFC advice process did not exist. So the studio would edit the film and would submit it with a request for a 12A rating. 
the BBFC would still have cited the exact same sections in the torture scene as being beyond the confines of the 12A rating, and they would have indicated to the filmmakers in a formal cuts list, remove X, Y, and Z, and you can have your 12A rating. So in essence, the same situation applies whether a film is seen for advice or a formal classification. The board indicates which scenes have to be addressed in order for a film studio to get their desired rating. Crucially, in comparison to the advice process, the BBFC website would have indicated that Casino Royale was cut by 13 seconds if the filmmakers had simply chosen the route of a formal classification. Now, my guess is that if Casino Royale had skipped the advice process, the majority of people interested in censorship would look at the BBFC website, see 13 seconds of cuts had been made, and be angry at the BBFC for cutting the film for a 12A, rather than being angry at the distributors. Now, when it comes to the issue of blame in the eyes of the BBFC, it's perhaps summed up particularly well by a rather deflective quote from the BBFC's annual report of 1998, uh, which mentions Lethal Weapon 4. That was a film that did not take the advice route. It was simply submitted in its uncut form with a request for a 15 rating. The BBFC's annual report states that Lethal Weapon 4 was re-edited at the request of the distributor in order to attain a 15 rather than the less profitable 18 certificate. This achieved the welcome reduction of violence in teenage entertainment. Where possible, the board will try to assist with such cuts, since voluntary self-censorship is a useful means of reducing the general level of glamorised mayhem in films designed for American teenagers. If we are to achieve the goal of less violence in popular entertainment that is likely to be seen by teenagers, then this sort of negotiated solution seems preferable to old-fashioned censorship particularly when it leaves all parties satisfied. Well, surely the BBFC demanding what has to be cut for a 15 is the very definition of censorship. Surely it's the BBFC's fault that Lethal Weapon 4 was cut for a 15 and not the filmmakers. So whilst the BBFC state that the distributors were happy with a 15, although I'm sure they would have been much happier with an uncut 15, and the board was of course happy as the quote indicates, any serious film lover was, I propose, very unsatisfied with the resulting cut version, especially since 90 seconds of footage had been removed. Now, the outgoing BBFC director wrote a letter in the same report of that year, which is at once quite telling and also somewhat hypocritical. He said, I am proud to have transformed the BBFC from a board of censors to a board of classification. Violence is still the thorniest problem. In Britain, we have held the line on violence, but my instinct is still to reduce the level of violence in action-adventure films simply in order to have less of it. Now, if that is not an outright declaration of pure censorship, I don't know what is. Now, it is fair to say that the BBFC is far less censorial now than it was under James Furman's reign, which again is to be commended. But the key takeaway from all of this is that cuts made to any film are ordained by the BBFC. Filmmakers are not simply cutting films on their own, removing footage that they think is problematic. The cuts are made based on BBFC guidelines. Any cuts that are made to a film, whether they occur after the BBFC advice process or after a formal submission, are made at the behest of the board and their guidelines. So if, for example, a knife is portrayed in what they feel is a glamorised manner, or the weapon is focused upon, like it is in the Hunger Games, the BBFC object to it for a 12A rating and demand that it be cut to achieve that rating. Now, of course, the studios obviously comply to ensure the maximum UK box office potential, but other countries around the world are passing the same film on cut with similar or equivalent ratings, seemingly without issue. Now, these cuts are arguably UK-specific, and the cuts, I would argue, are not the fault of filmmakers. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this quote from a New York Times article from way back in April 1972, um, an article written by Stephen Farber and Estelle Changas. 
It's from the New York Times, and it's discussing the MPAA, which is roughly the American equivalent of the BBFC. But the argument applies equally as well today when it comes to the BBFC in England, as it did almost 50 years ago in the States. And the quote from the article is as follows. Some people who do not understand the rating system blame the studios for agreeing to edit their films in return for a less restrictive rating that may mean a wider audience and heftier profits. A common argument is that editing is always voluntary, but no filmmaker wants to cut his film. The ratings board offers the filmmaker and the studio only two choices, a choice of evils. Either they can accept a harsh restriction that deprives them of part of the audience they intend to reach, or they can edit their films according to the board's specifications. So, I leave you with the question, who is to blame for the cutting of films in Britain, and why? Is it the BBFC, or is it the filmmakers? We would welcome your thoughts on this question, and you can share them with us on our Facebook page, which is available at facebook.com forward slash cutting edge series. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Cutting Edge podcast. I thank you for listening, and I also thank you for continuing to support the show. If in doubt, import.